In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we are celebrating the Thursday of the ninth week of Ordinary Time. And as we gather in God's presence, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, he healed the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of, a of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we, sh we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind people of these things and charge them before God to stop disputing about words. This serves no useful purpose since it harms those who listen. Be eager to present yourself as acceptable to God, a workman who causes no disgrace, imparting the word of truth without deviation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God and my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy towards those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him, and his covenants for those instruction. Teach me your ways, O Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love the, your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than He. And to love Him with all your heart, and with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that He had answered with understanding, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask Him any more questions. Words can be very powerful. The wrong set of words can trigger a war. The right words of compassion, tenderness, and love can bring healing to somebody who's suffering great physical affliction. So we know that words can be very powerful, but they also have their limitations. 
Despite being this great gift of intellect that allows us to communicate abstract thoughts and ideas from one person to another, they also have this limited ability to convey the deeper meaning. So words, like the messenger, are not greater than the meaning or the message itself. The finger that points to the moon is not the moon itself. So when we start to argue about the meaning of words, sometimes we actually do a little bit more harm than good. In the first reading, Paul is advising Timothy to admonish the people to not get caught up in disputes over words because it causes harm to those who try to listen. So if you've ever tuned into recently a press conference hoping to get some serious, relevant, important pieces of information about the world affairs or the, the state of the pandemic, and you find the arguments that go on, it might cause you to get kind of sick even if you don't have the disease. So Paul is right in challenging Timothy to admonish us to not get caught up in the dispute over words. Yes, we are supposed to have discourse and dialogue, but sometimes you have to work at it for a while before we can come to an understanding of what the meaning is for the other person. Meaning is quite subjective. I say tomato, you say tomato, and the like. So we have to be conscious of the fact that just because we're throwing words at each other doesn't mean that we're actually communicating. That is why when we get to the day, today's gospel, Jesus takes a different approach. He is approached by a scribe, somebody that knows words quite well, is very familiar with scripture, understands that the Mosaic law has over 600 different laws trying to articulate how we're supposed to love God, and recognizes that each of those commandments have certain nuances, certain relevance and importance. But after you have so many words, you kind of wonder if it's somehow not losing meaning. So I think that he's authentic and not simply just trying to trap Jesus when he asks the question, of all these different rules and regulations and nuances and different subjective elements, what's the most important? Now Jesus takes the commandments and tries to strip away all the nuances and the variations to get down to what is the most basic of meaning to love God with all you've got. Now granted, those terms themselves are a bit ambiguous. What is love? Oh, we could go on forever trying to describe what love is. What is God or who is God? Even worse, a mystery beyond our comprehension. But we understand totality and all in commitment. And so we understand from our own egos, from our own pride, from our own self-centeredness, what it means to be totally committed to sacrifice all for the sake of something. So we may not know how to love God, we may not know who God is when we're loving God, but we do understand the intensity of what that relationship is supposed to contain. Jesus then adds in the second equal commandment, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Again, one point, they asked a question, well, then who is my neighbor? I want to be justified there. I want to get this right. Again, the question of what love means can be quite subjective. But we do know what it means to relate to ourselves. We do it so naturally, so completely, so unconsciously, that that is the nature or that's the means by which we're also supposed to extend our love for one another, for our neighbor. Not that we have to pull out a rule book and find out which commandments apply in this circumstance. Not that we're supposed to use the rules as a bare minimum to say, well, I don't have to do this. It's not my job. It's not in writing. Instead, we're supposed to apply the all-in commitment to what we would want for ourselves. And that is what gives us the meaning of the commandments. Very few words, pretty rich and deep in meaning. So we could go on all night or day arguing about the meaning of words and not quite get it right. But if we borrow St. Francis's suggestion that we preach the gospel with our actions, words are only necessary 
after the fact. We do have a rift, rich gift in language, but when we abuse it, we do great harm to ourselves and to others. Our merciful Father hears the prayers of all who call upon his name. Let us bring our prayers before him. For our church, may the Holy Spirit help us in never seeking, ceasing to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all corners of the earth. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may God write upon their hearts the first of all commandments as they guide their people in their daily lives. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For prisoners, for persons incarcerated wrongly, and for political prisoners, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, especially those who experience doubt, may the Lord's grace enkindle hearts of steadfastness and courage. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Penna and Debella families, and his mass of in thanksgiving for whom this mass is offered and for all our beloved dead may they soon meet god face to face and live in his kingdom forever let us pray lord hear our prayer god of mercy and justice you have shown us that you will honor all co covenants and keep all promises hear the prayers we lift to you today through christ our lord amen Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, you'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of this holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed of the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, that those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.